G'day footy fans, Dane here from NRL Rumours and Updates. Um, bring you guys a new little series today. It's going to be called The Ranking with Dane Clark. So essentially, I'm going to go through each team this off-season, um, position by position, club by club, and sort of count down 16 to 1. So this first episode here is going to be fullback, um, and then I'll probably do the spine first, and then I'll go to other positions through there. So... Just a bit of content to keep us all up and uh, jiffy in the off-season. It's getting a bit boring. We're all missing our footy, so hopefully this can spark some constructive uh, talk across Facebook, um, my Instagram, and also the comment section here. Uh, with that being said, guys, let's crack on with it and uh, get into the video. All right, starting us off at the bottom, uh, the Newcastle Knights. Probably a position they're used to being uh, the last couple of years, but I am hoping it turns around for them in 2019. This might be a shock to some people, but of course, if you aren't already aware, Kalen Ponga, uh, he will not be playing fullback at least to start the year. He'll be starting at 5'8", and that's where he's training this preseason. Uh, the Knights have made it a bit of their uh, pretty big focus of theirs to um, work on his combination with Mitchell Pierce this preseason. So with that being said, Connor Watson looks set to start at fullback for the Knights. And uh, I have him ranked at the bottom of this list. Number 15 may come as a bit of a surprise as well to some people, but I've got uh, the St. George Illawarra Dragons and uh, Matt Dufty. Uh, obviously, for Dufty, the biggest thing he needs to do now is work on stringing consistent sort of performances together. He was really good through 2018 in patches, but he also had a couple games there uh, where he went missing. And there was also, of course, the um, incident where he was asked to be dropped because it was... Uh, pretty mentally demanding for him uh, being in the NRL. So I've got him at 15, um, but with that being said, I do hope he improves in uh, 2019. Number 14 now, the Canterbury Bulldogs, and uh, this could be one when I do the, my annual review videos leading into the 2020 season that I uh, wish I ranked higher. So Nick Meany would be their primary, with obviously Hopawati able to uh, slot back into the fullback there. Um, we haven't seen a lot of Nick Meany, but from what we have seen, he does look like a uh, very promising young fullback. But uh, we'll need to see a bit more of him before I can rank him uh, higher on this list. Number 13, I've gone with the Parramatta Reels. Obviously, they had a disastrous season last year. But um, looking at where they rank um, in terms of fullbacks on this, still not very high. Although Gutherson definitely was the shining light in their side last year. Some other options available to the Eels would be Corey Norman, Bevan French, Blake Ferguson, Will Smith, and even uh, Josh Hoffman with the ability to slot into full. Number 12, I've chosen the Melbourne Storm. Obviously, Jerome Hughes um, does have a lot of potential. He's already a Tier 1 uh, representative player for the New Zealand Kiwis. And then Scott Drinkwater was um, very good on debut, had an excellent game against the Titans, unfortunately. Um, but... One game is obviously a lot different to a whole season, which one of them is going to have to do with Billy Slater now retired. So I've had to rank them possibly a little lower, possibly a little higher than they deserve to be. Number 11, the Cronulla Sharks. Now, you'd think these guys would be a lot higher on the list, but even with losing um, Valentine Holmes, they're still able to replace him with um, two former New South Wales Blues players, Josh Dugan or Matt Moylan. Um, and of course, whichever of those options they go with, they'll either be bringing in Kyle Flanagan, who is obviously a, a half of the future, or Bronson Zeri, who Flanagan admitted he would have debuted him last year, but he was still 17. On debut in reserve grade, uh, at only 17 years old, he scored three tries. So whichever option they go with there, um, obviously a lot of potential still. Number 10, I've gone with the South Sydney Rabbitohs. Now, their primary will obviously be Alex Johnston, given he's very uh, ex a lot more experienced than Corey Allen. However, if Corey Allen was to take the reins permanently um, in 2019, which may occur if Alex Johnston chooses to sign with the Cronulla Sharks, um, Coach Shane Flanagan did uh, indeed confirm that the Sharks are interested in AJ um, with Holmes departing the club. So Corey Allen has already played under-20s for Australia and also Prime Minister's 13 um, at fullback. So he's very talented and uh, he came from the Broncos system. So with Wayne Bennett likely coming across in 2019, uh, they do have their option. Number nine, the Canberra Raiders. Now we obviously haven't seen a lot of this bloke in 2018, but Jack Wyden is a very, very powerful ball runner. And um, if he can get back to his best in 2019, he'll be very damaging again. Other options for the Raiders include Nick Kotrick, who I believe will eventually um, go from the wing to permanent fullback later on in his career, keeping in mind he is still very young. Um, and then they've also got the option of Brad Abbey there, who's 
pretty versatile also. Number eight is my boys and a position I'm hoping we finish within in 2019, the Gold Coast Titans. Uh, my first choice, of course, would be AJ Brimson. He is just spectacular. Um, probably my favorite player. If you watch some of the plays he was making towards the end of 2018, obviously at fullback, he has the ability to play make. He's experienced half as well, but it also gives him a ticket to introduce his running game, which is so powerful. He's so quick off the mark. And um, defensively, look, he's a little guy, but don't let that fool you. Um, he saved a lot of tries for us towards the back end. There was one game where he saved a try and then they spread the ball all the way out to the left. He made it all the way, covered all the ground and saved the try again. So I can't talk highly enough of AJ. Um, and as for Michael Gordon, Mr. Reliable, doesn't set a foot wrong when he plays for us. Uh, always great under the high ball. And obviously his leadership is very valued in a young side. Number seven, the Brisbane Broncos. Now, I know a lot of people will seem to give Darius Boyd a bit of hate and he is getting to the end of his career. Um, nonetheless, still a very talented um, ball player. And um, as Wayne Bennett has said, he is one of the best leaders and um, talkers on the field that he's ever seen. So uh, no doubt with him at the back uh, directing the Broncos defense, it's a better outfit. But um, look, if he was to succumb to injury or if it was decided to move him to center um, in 2019, they can replace him with Jermaine Asako. Look, he's the reigning rookie of the year from last season. Not much more to say. Very impressive. Very big future in our sport. Number six is the West Tigers. Um, I know a lot of people will think this is a bit too highly ranked, but um, I can't talk highly enough of Moses Mbai. He's a fullback with the vision, the passing, and the kicking abilities of a halfback. Um, you factor in his dangerous running game as well. Uh, so I remember seeing a highlight the other day where he just sold some candy, absolute superb dummy, um, two times, and made it to the line to score. Um, if Moses M by fires and has a great year, then um, he's a big chance to lead the Tigers to the top eight on the back of his form. Uh, Corey Thompson, as well, is very capable of filling in uh, the fullback role. Number five, Penrith Panthers. Now, what a headache for Ivan Cleary. Uh, do you go with Dylan Edwards, who is one of the brightest prospects at fullback uh, before, unfortunately, um, getting injured? Or do you stick with the New Zealand Kiwis captain and fullback, Dallin Watani Zelezniak? Uh, I'm going to say he slightly leans towards Edwards at fullback, and that's because DWZ is proven on the wing, whereas I don't believe Edwards is proven in the wing, um, especially not within the NRL. So a headache you'd probably rather have as a coach than not, but uh, nonetheless, he's got a he's got a tough uh, battle in his hands trying to select his... Number four, Manly Sea Eagles. Now, Tom Travojevic... Uh, I think he's, just when you say his name, there's enough highlights you can look up. There's enough spectacular stuff we've seen from this bloke. But um, if you look at another boom youngster that I've included um, below him, as you'll see, Albert Hoppawati. This guy is insane. Some of his highlights coming through. He breaks through six or seven defenders and will run 100 meters and make it look easy. He, will, he won't even be sweating afterwards. Um, so I think Manly have a very, very dangerous fullback coming through in him. And if not, they've got an Australian and New South Wales star in Tom Travoy. Number three, the North Queensland Cowboys. What can I say here? Benny Barber, the reigning man of steel from the English Super League, former Dalian winner, premiership winner. There's not much more you can say about this bloke. He is a super talent. Uh, I think I speak for all NRL fans when we're so excited to see him back in the NRL. Um, his running game, when he's on, is second to none. Um, and I, I could almost go as far to say as his 2012 season was the best season from any individual um, we've ever seen within our game. Number two, New Zealand Warriors, I'm sure. Uh, seeing Roger Tuivasa Sheck so high up on this list comes as a surprise to no one. Reigning Dalian medalist um, from 2018, had a superb season. And uh, look, his form was largely um, contributed to the Warriors making the top eight. I think if Roger Tulvasashek didn't have the season he did, the Warriors may not have made the top eight, um, especially when the Tigers came knocking. So RTS with uh, Peter Hiku potentially to fill in throughout the year. Uh, I think the Warriors justify their number two spot on this list. And number one, of course, the Sydney Roosters. Uh, James Tedesco, in my opinion, is the best player in the world at the moment. Uh, his agility, the way he breaks tackles and slots into the offensive uh, back line. Uh, there's no one else in our game that does it quite like Teddy. Factor in some of his potential replacements. 
um, around origin time. They will probably go with Brett Morris, who in his own mind is a former Australian and New South Wales rep. And of course, they've also got the option to add Latrell Mitchell to fullback, which I don't think they'll do. But throughout the year, come on, the best player in the world. And then for state of origin time, they're going to be likely replacing him with a former Australian and New South Wales representative player in Brett Morris. Uh, I don't think anyone comes close to them, and they definitely deserve number one on this list. All right, guys, that is going to wrap up my ranking report, 16-1 to 1 fullbacks throughout all NRL clubs. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know your 16 to number one, either in the comments here on my Facebook or my Instagram. As you guys know, I'm very responsive uh, to all your messages there because I just love footy. Um, it is getting difficult. I'm getting probably, I would say... 50 messages um, across all platforms per day but as you guys know I always get back to you um, whether you're asking a question rumor update whatever uh, always do my best to get back to you uh, another thing obviously this list was intended in no way to be disrespectful to anyone every single person I just mentioned on that list is obviously a lot more successful than myself and that's why I'm sitting here talking about them. So, I mean, completely no disrespect. Um, if you believe I ranked someone lower than they deserved, then that's your opinion. This was my opinion. So, I hope you respect mine because I respect yours. Um, with that being said, this is me signing off. Really hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you very much for the support. And I uh, hope to see you guys in future videos.